Hey y'all, this is your headmaster and queen bee, Jessie James here, to tell you that our magic school system has a new superintendent, Miss Susan. Usually, I encourage our students to be well behaved and respectful to their elders, but Miss Susan thinks she's cute by quietly pelting your teachers and I with odd and conflicting rules. Yes, she is very much like that numbers lady from that overrated school across the ocean. Although her new rules and regulations don't make a lick of sense, we do need to passive aggressively abide by them or the school will lose funding. That means no curse words, no violent video games, anything edgier than Animal Crossing is strictly a no-no. What? She banned Animal Crossing? Violence against fish? Seriously? What kind of... Deep vat of mail did this lady crawl out of? <clears throat> no mentions of anything more mature than kindergarten level content. No, not even SpongeBob. Yes, I checked. Stay tuned for further oppression. I mean, updates. Oh, Lord have mercy. Hey, y'all. So sorry I am an hour late to this hour and ten minute long class. I do feel so terribly guilty for wasting y'all's time. I hope you had some means of occupying yourselves while I was gone. Maybe doing your homework or playing on your phone or whatever. It doesn't matter. What matters is you do not tell Headmaster Jess that I was an hour late to an hour and ten minute long class. Why was I an hour late? Well, you see, I am Professor Mokin, your Care for Magical Critters professor. And as it happens, magical critters could give a dang. See, Susan, I said dang. About schedules or deadlines or my own plans for the evening. This is one of the many reasons why I do not require you to have homework in this class. Because my hellhounds would definitely eat your homework. And that's just awkward for everybody. Moving on at last. As y'all may know, Hognolia is one of the most underfunded magical schools in the world. Yes, we do get your broomsticks and other school supplies from the Goodwill. And yes, all of the books for this class are illegible because they have been chewed on by, well, hellhounds and other magical critters. But we have to keep reusing them because we can't afford anything newer. But I'm here to tell y'all that doesn't really matter. What matters is this year's wizarding tournament. All around the Atlantic, wizarding schools are going to come together and compete. Here's the most important part. Hognolia's main rival. That school that shall not be named because of copyright reasons will be there. And they will be smug. And yes, they have better funding than we do. And yes, they're extremely famous. Yes, they even have a theme park somewhere in Florida. And all of that information put together means we have a patriotic duty to defeat that school. That's right, y'all. We must do everything in our power to make sure that the magical school that shall not be named walks out of that tournament with their tails between their legs. Nothing gives me greater pleasure than seeing rich people cry. The only thing that'll suck is they probably have a national health service. And they better use it, because they're going to need therapy once we're done with them. But here's the issue. As much as I want to utilize the gift of learning to fuel my own pettiness and spite, I also have to be careful. If Hognolia's School of Magic is way too good at the tournament this year, the state will see that we could do a lot with the little funding that they squeeze out for us, and they're going to try to test that boundary a little more. So if we do really good, ironically, they will cut our funding. The rationale, and they have used this in the past, is, well, damn, you did so well with literal pennies. Let's see if we can break those pennies in half. This means we have to be good, but we can't be too good. And so, my students, today I will be teaching you the magic of animal-born sabotage. Is it like Pokemon? Yes. Well, no. 
Maybe? We will be utilizing chickens, and swine, and geese, and gators to trip up, distract, and perhaps even physically harm the competition. First things first, geese. The key to weaponizing geese is one, information, and two, misinformation. You must know, geese are in fact scientifically proven to be from hell, but that doesn't mean you can't understand the critter. Look in the hell bird for signs of aggression. It will bend its head slightly, and then if it straightens its neck, it is about to jump you, especially if it starts pumping it up and down. If it hisses or it honks, it wants to fight. Being a good southern mage, you will know you cannot win against a goose. You will lose that fight. So, try to leave before it chases you. You gotta back away slowly, okay? Do not start running. The hell goose may try to chase you. If it does chase you, resist that urge to run away and just back away slowly, okay? Keep your eyes on that goose. Do not turn your back to the goose, whatever you do. If you trip and fall, well, I don't even think church grandmama could pray you out of that situation. But knowing this, you still need to remain calm. If you are injured, try your best to go to Walmart, get you some band-aids, get you some like antibiotics and stuff. Whatever you do, do not go to the doctor. You probably can't afford it. Now, if you see those smug students from across the Atlantic and they are in the deadly gaze of a goose, tell them to become hostile. Tell them it's okay if you drop kick the goose. Tell them to turn away. If you don't look at it, it won't hurt you. And tell them to run. Tell them to run as fast as they can. Good hellhound. Tell them. Tell them about the goose. Exactly. Now, as those smug little tea drinking yellow belly, no good insurance having, Mary Sue's are running away from the goose and getting their booties beat. I request that you film it for me, put it up on World Star or on YouTube, and we'll all watch it together in class. If you really want to screw over the students from the other school, tell them to feed the geese. Now you may be asking Professor Mokin, why did you bring your hellhounds to class? The geese, obviously. I do have to protect the hellhounds from the geese. But the geese are not our biggest weapon. Can, can we say that under the new administration? Is weapon a bad word now? Announcement, y'all. There is a strange European poltergeist going around hiding all the seasoning for our food. We do have a pastor, a priest, and Ichigo Kurosaki on the case. If you see this poltergeist, tell him that KFC is a real chicken to pacify him, and then report his whereabouts to the staff or faculty immediately. Either way, our secret weapon is prophetic chickens. Don't you laugh. Don't you laugh. Notice the honor students from Florida. They are not laughing. This is because prophetic chickens have predicted the winners for every single NCAA competition for 116 years and counting. This is every sport, y'all. The prophetic chicken even called the latest 2021 Supreme Court case against the NCAA and it predicted that the NCAA would lose. Now, how we could utilize this power. We can use the prophetic chickens to see which of the tournaments we will win or lose. And using this knowledge, we can prepare the appropriate amount of pettiness per competition. Additionally, we can use the prophetic chickens predictions. We could learn them for ourselves. And then we could lie to the competition and say that the chicken said something else. Is that too confusing? Uh, uh, uh question. Yeah, uh, Professor Mokin, if we have prophetic chickens who can tell us the scores of sports games, uh, why doesn't the school have more money? Uh, I didn't hear what you said. What? If you can see into the future and see sports scores, why doesn't the school have more money? Uh, yeah, I still can't hear you. I don't, I have no clue what you're saying. You 
can hear me clearly. Oh, no, I can't. I, I have no clue what you're saying. Wait, are you saying that Hognolia uses sports betting to get their funding? I didn't say anything. I have no clue what you're talking about. I plead the fifth, moving on to the prophetic chickens. Let's go ahead and have an example of how to read a chicken's prophecies. You must approach the chicken from the side. You must bow slightly and say, hey, how you doing, chicken? I'm doing good, Professor Morgan. How's your mama doing? Doing fine, chicken. My mama's doing fine. All right, students. Now, you must gently pet the chicken from neck to tail. Oh, that does feel very nice. Thank you. Now, take this moment while you have the prophetic chicken's attention to ask your question. All right, chicken. Who is going to win the wizarding tournament this year? The other team's gonna win, but we're gonna be happy about it? What the fuck? Uh, uh, no, stop right there, Professor. Miss Susan is always listening. Ooh, Professor Mokin got in trouble. Hey, y'all, it's Marsha O'Hare with Nightmare Public Broadcasting here to ask underfunded southern school. I wonder where Belladonna got that idea from. If only her public school system had a prophetic chicken. Wait a second. Our own prophetic chicken has a prediction. She says that good times are sure to come for our patrons. Zemo, Rocco, the Lagos Amancer, Aethyrka, Yokothu, Pingli, Cherry was script, Man of Many Bees, Matt Weston, Cirrus Daydreams, Preston Pierce, Skeletor, Amzu, Wiley Eye, Fire, Sam Myers, Jackson Daniel 42, Del Boy, Petster Mogus, and Brian Adamson. Wait, our prophetic chicken has another prediction. YouTube will start cracking down on everybody, and money is getting real tight around here. So, the chicken predicts that you'll become a patron over on patreon.com slash belladonna ASMR. Where it is predicted you'll get access to comics, audio essays, and other exclusives that Susan over here on YouTube would find quite objectionable. Join now, join whenever, and you'll always get a full month's access of all those goodies. All while supporting me... The barking dogs in the background, and the content you love. Also, word up to Dr. Jess for playing the magnificent, the glorious headmaster Jesse James. Yay! This story was completely different before the apocalypse. Yay! <laughs> All right, y'all. Stay safe out there for me. Bye. What's that, Pippin? The prophetic chicken told you that you're going to get ear scratches in your near future? Well, that sounds good to me.